Hello guys, welcome back to the channel where it's a never-ending struggle against the old man. Um, he's been trying to coo at me to get me to come back and finish his temple, please. And uh, I said, you know, you do this all the time, old man. You get your way. You ask me to become a heathen. I go, fine, I'll be, I'll be a heathen. Then you close the door on me, won't let me have any freedom. And he apologizes for grabbing at you, and the next moment he grabs at you again. I said, you just don't seem to understand. And it's a thing with the old man. He has this definite block where he truly can't see why he can't have everything he wants. And if he wants you and he wants to grab at you, he's going to do it. He may apologize, and then a millisecond later he's going to grab at you again. It's just his essential nature. And I did take some time out today to do some heathen studies, and I'm like, okay, you know, what the hell's going wrong? And, you know, one of the problematic things is Odin's a huge problem in heathenry for a lot of reasons. And, um, you know, I was just aggravated, and I was agitated and had to get out of the house, so I figured I'll make something out of this day. And I called my friend, and she didn't sound like she was happy to hear from me she, some, she runs hot and cold this one and I said hey I've got some coupons do you like them I'll bring them up and she said yeah I'll be out there in a few minutes like she's about to die okay she talks like it sometimes and I said all right and I change and I walk up and I go to open her door and her door is locked and I put it in her mailbox and I thought well maybe she's feeling sick and under the weather I hope she's okay. And I thought, well, it's been a really crummy day. And I went up to the DQ. And I'm forgetting to tell you, but as I was walking out towards her in the corner, this crow flies like right almost in front of my face. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I go up to the DQ, even though I know I shouldn't, you know, and I get the food. And I'm coming back and I walk by her place and she's out. And I'm like, I'm not stopping because she wants to talk for two, three hours sometimes. And I would like my food edible. And I think it's rude to eat in front of somebody unless you're going to share with them. And I waved to her and I pointed at her mailbox. And I mouthed that it's in your mailbox. And I kept pointing towards her mailbox. And I walked on. And I got home and I was kind of mad because I'm like, well, you know, I know she's older and she doesn't move as fast. But everything has to be kind of on her time schedule. So I tried calling her, and I was going to offer to come back up afterwards, and I wanted to see if she got it, you know. Even though I'm a little annoyed at her time schedule, I'm like, well, you know, old people are just like out there set in their ways. And she won't answer the phone. Okay. I eat. I try to call her again, because I figure, well, she's just, she's contrary. I might as well call her. It rings, it rings, it rings, it rings, it rings. I'm like, okay. And she's older, so even though I'm really mad at this point, and I really don't want to see her, I'm like, I will walk up to make sure her damn full self went in the house. I walk up, she's in the house. And so she just hadn't been answering the phone. I'm like, you know what? Okay. Because I know she has caller ID, she's not going to talk to me now. And I'm like, you know, I, I went up, I put it in her mailbox because her door was locked. And as I was walking back, I waved to her and pointed towards the mailbox. I, she knows that if I'm going to eat lunch, I'm not going to just stop and eat lunch in front of her. I think that's really rude. Um, in fact, yesterday, um, her whatever you want to call him, stop, you know, came back and he had brought them dinner. And it was clear signal for me to leave. So I was like, well, I'm not going to eat in front of you, you know. So I left. So I don't know. So now she's not talking to me. And on the way back, after I pass her house, I start to hear these, like, little steps behind me. And I think, well, it must be, like, a, a animal rustling, you know, through the through the undergrowth or something. Though everything's cut down, there's really nothing for anything to run through. I'm like, it has to be, like, a leaf or a nut or a something. There's a logical explanation, but it sounds like footsteps rustling up behind me. And I'm like, it has to be an animal, right? Sometimes animals might follow you or something. And I come to this one area, and I have to stop to let seven or eight cars go by, and then I can, you know, get back on the road and get the rest of the way home. And as I get home, and I enter my own yard, I'm, I'm walking, you know, through my yard, and I'm hearing the steps behind me again. I'm like, well, unless a scroll or an invisible mole followed me, followed me out into the road, and then followed me, I must just be hearing, I don't know, the grass is springing back or something. But it's a sound like when somebody's walking on grass and they really don't want 
you to hear them like they're stealthing up behind you. And keep in mind, I'd had an argument with the old man, and I I said, prove, prove it. You know, old man, you, you got your way. Let's say I'm heathen now. I said, you got me isolated from all the other gods because you're good at that. I said, prove it. Where's all this back payment? Gift for gift is a huge tenant of heathenry. I said, where's all the stuff you owe me? I want it now. And nothing pisses the old man off like demands. I will tell you that from experience. Do not demand things from Odin. He gets majorly pissed off. And then he's never going to give it to you, whether he owes it to you or not. He's just, he's not a stubborn old bastard. And <laughs> back here. And I figured he had probably interfered at least a little bit with the friend because, you know, it was kind of odd that I went up and I dropped the stuff off and she didn't show up until after and, you know, however long it takes you to get fast food and begin your journey home. So I was like, well, you know, it's 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 kind of odd, but I thought maybe she was sick or run down today and I didn't want to bother her, especially with COVID being a thing. So I don't know. And the old man has been alternately cooing at me and trying to get me to come back and finish his temple. If he does, that's what he wants. And snarling at me and asking me what the hell did I think would happen. Hugin and Mugen would drop out of the sky and land on my shoulders and... And let me tell you something, Missy. You belong to me and I belong to you. And I'm... And you just kind of look at the old man and you sigh. And you wonder what god you pissed off in a past life that Odin is yours and you are his. And... It's just, it's aggravating. And the hard thing is if you research heathenry, they're, half of them seem to be atheists, at least half. They're archer atheists, and, you know, they call themselves heathens, but they don't believe in the gods, or they just believe they're archetypes or something safe. And I'm like, this archetype will fucking kick your ass for you. And for the people who do believe either Odin's too good to talk to anybody or Odin's pure evil or Odin's going to kill you or it's really hard to find sensible rational people that work with Odin you know because most sensible rational people will run the hell away when Odin shows up and he just he really doesn't give you a choice it's most of the people I think that work with him will say yeah he didn't give me a choice and he just kept turning my luck to shit until I agreed and then he was you know more generous and I think that's what he did today because I got the fast food and he was yelling at me and he's like, well, it's not helping you to be up here, my dear, just because we're having an argument and blah, blah, blah. So the food was pretty shit. And, you know, now my friend's apparently mad at me or something. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, be be like that. Be obstinate and ruin my life. He, and he alternates cooing at you and doing mean things to you. So it's just he's he's hard to deal with. And I said, look, I'm, I'm again willing to deal. If you've got me as a heathen, fine. But I want to see that you care. And I said, I'm asking you for, you know, just a sign. And, you know, anybody could have read signs from anything. Like, there was a Comcast truck fixing power lines on my way out. So, like, communication is broken down. But, you know, you could read signs from anything. And I kind of try to take that middle approach where every single thing is not a sign, and yet it could be if they're trying to talk to you. So we're just at an impasse right now. And I, you know, I tried calling my friend twice again, and she didn't pick up. And now I know she's mad at me and because I didn't stop. But she's kind of like that. She wants it to run on her time. And I guess she could accuse me of the same thing. But I thought, well, maybe she's sick, and I didn't want to stop with COVID being a thing. And put her at risk. So, you know, and I just saw her yesterday. So I'm like, well, you know, okay, she didn't want bothered. Um, I can be annoying, I suppose, and be underfoot. Um, I really thought she didn't want bothered, and that's why I didn't bother, you know, staying and waiting for her. So, what are you going to do? Can't make people happy, that's all I know. But the old man is something else. He was demanding I come back. You know, first he was trying to sweet talk me into it. And now he's yelling at me and demanding that I come back and I finish his temple and I owe him this. And I said, do you know how many damn temples I've built you and how many gifts I've given you over the years, old man? You owe me. And then we're having an argument about who owes who what. So, this is why nothing ever happens in my life. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe. I, I really don't like the idea of using the word heathen. To me, it's it's problematic, and he knows why. And it's just, 
I wouldn't have so much a problem with being heathen and being with the Norse gods, but I, I'm just asking him, give me a sign of good faith, old man. You know, that's all I'm asking. I said, you know, usually when Odin wants something, he goes off his way to be charming and drop little tokens at people's feet. And I said, you're not doing that with me. You're being an obstinate old bastard. And you're trying to calm me down, and Thor's trying to calm me down because they know we're ready to fight. And Loki's like, I don't think you should be yelling at him as much as you do. You might die or something. So Loki actually gave me a couple warnings today. He's like, look, I know you're both mad, but he's the god. He can kill you. Just remember this, okay? So Loki actually drugged me out of the fight. He was like, "He, I know him. He's my brother. He's ready to fucking go off. Shut the fuck up. Sit down. Do whatever you want. So he probably is going to get his temple. Loki was actually worried. He's like, you, you're really pushing it. You're, you're, you're in the danger zone right now. He is actually mad, mad, not just argumentative mad, so. I should take a lesson in diplomacy from Odin, just terrorize people into doing what you want. But if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe. I guess I'm off to build a temple before the old man truly blows a gasket, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.